Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about guarding and blocking today. I don't actually use it much, but there are some things that are very important about guarding and blocking. First and foremost, if you have a physical shield with 100% physical negation, then you're actually not taking any damage when you're blocking. My tiny shield has 58. So if I walk up to this gentleman here right now, very beginning, tiny samurai shield, he stares down my soul. Hello, sir. And I block. He's going to do a tiny bit of damage to me, right? Then there's difference between a block and a counter. So you can block with L1, but you can also counter with L2. And you do that. And you can straight up actually with someone. Though, that being said, it's it's quite a tricky timing. I have not figured out how to do this 100% correctly. But on top of this, with cheese and cream, they're 100% physical negation shields too. So that means when you block, it's always 100% physical being negated, which is very interesting, especially in the late games, because you can block whole hits from bosses. That being said, though, if you have this gentleman here right now and you actually do block, you can instantly press R2 as kind of a counter attack and then also execute someone. That's very interesting, right? So instead of trying to do this guard counter, which if you have not a 100% physical negation shield makes sense, you could also instead just normally block. Obviously, you got to get the timing done. Got to wait for him to hit you. And as he hits you, press R2. And you hear this noise, this ching where you then actually do get the guard counter. And that works for any kind of person. Obviously, you have to consider the length of your weapon. So if you're fighting against a huge giant and you're standing far away, yeah, it can be unfortunate. But if you're looking for a secure way to play this game, here you go. See, now I pressed R2 way too early and that's why he hit me. So that was bad timing. Now we do it again. Let him go, let him beat me. Guard counter, stun, execute. It's like literally you can you can play the whole game like this. You can go against bosses like this. You can go against multiple opponents. So I have this gentleman here too. And block on. And you saw he was hitting relatively fast, right? Well, this guy's coming from the back. In the back step, you're immune to damage, which is cool. So Ha! Now let me show that in a further developed character with a more advanced opponent than average Jimothy's. But I guess if you're very new to the game and if you don't actually directly know how to play yet, this definitely offers you an easy way to get into the game and get there. It's not really hard to actually find the hitting point because you essentially have the impact. Impact on shield, press R2. Get him staggered and then walk up R1. So we're gonna go through the steps again. I press L1, that is the normal block. He hits me, I press heavy attack, which is R2. He hits, heavy attack, R2, and then walk up, R1 for light attack. On mouse and keyboard, the same heavy light attack, block everything. Just find your respective keybinds. Very simple, and yes, it can be done against bosses also. One thing you need to keep in mind is when using this against bosses, that not every boss staggers as easy as normal units. They do have more poise. So all these tiny units here, it's usually block and then instant stagger and execute. Whereas when we're talking about bigger bosses, it's usually three counters into an execute, okay? So that is very important to keep in mind when we're talking about this, that you don't expect instantly to then get them staggered but that depends from boss to boss regardless of that if you counter the attack with a block and instantly go for the hitting window you do usually get your hit off still though this is more meant to go through all the rabble than effectively beat every single boss for bosses you still need to learn the patterns but that being said you know this is one of the first guys you meet See, there you saw it. He hit me through my hit because he was firing off a combo. When he does one hit, and I can break it there, right? But he does a full ass blown super combo, can get tricky. One hit. 
Very important about using parries is that you actually stand completely in an opponent. So guard counter is really good for normal mobs around the map. But if we're talking about fighting against bosses, so you could eat the attack and try to retaliate, but it doesn't really work. So if we're talking about the real parry against the boss, the most important part is that you stand in them because it's it's a little bit weird, but for parries, um, like in order to have them work, the best way is to literally stand inside the boss. You see that we did this parry here. So you gotta, you gotta get very close and personal. And then when they do their attacks, you're ready, right? But that only works when you're inside of them. So you gotta get the parry timing in very nasty. And you can then go always for an execute. Like if I'm trying to go for a medium swing here, now I'm trying to like position myself for the overhead whatsoever. Like this, a little bit of distance, it doesn't work. The reality with parry and guard counters is if you get extremely proficient, it's a powerful tool. Realistically, I have fared always better with just rolling my opponents and fighting my hitting windows. That being said though, if you do want to do the guard counters, absolutely fine. When you get your timing, you get your ching, you get your done, and you can kill normal mobs very easily. But if you want to do your parries, also learn that. And it's it's a tricky one. You can always start in a block though, so that's very interesting. You can begin with a block. So I'm having like permanently my block on, right? And as he then does his attack, and I feel confident that I could guard counter or parry his attack, I try to parry. But you won't lose, you know? Tried to parry, didn't work. Tried to parry, didn't work, as you can see. Like for me, finding the parry timings, he did get a delayed attack, but I mess it up, but I get my block still. Boom, parry. So it's kind of like the best way to explain it here is that you do, even if you mess it up, like if you hold your block button constantly, you do have your block straight up ready again. So in case you don't get it done, but you have 100% physical negation shield, in case he does a delayed attack and you do it early, you at least have your block. So worst case scenario, you'll be safe. Now you completely screw up your parry. So we walk up to him, we have our block, we completely screw up our parry, oh no. We still have our block, completely screwed up. Obviously shitty timing, but normal block, right? So it can be like, I screwed it up, normal block. Is that brings my stamina annoying doesn't work matter so you get to like you know find find your way around that oh i screwed it up but normal block as always get good <laughs> i mean lance opponents and everything that does a delayed swing is annoying but once you get it down you can really get your counters in i hope this helped you again try to stand as close as possible to an opponent uh but yeah I'm this is something you need to train vigorously against everyone and to really get good at. And it needs a lot of nerves because obviously if you're getting low HP or if you're not having all your flash charges left and then doing it against a boss, I prefer rolling around bosses. It just works best for me, you know, and then do my two-handed hits and use my cool combos and other shenanigans to murder them. But that's just me. Choose your way how to play. Hope this helped you to get better at guard counters and parries. And in total, dominate an Elden Ring harder and not get that much frustrated, especially by normal mobs. There's normal mobs you can manhandle like this extremely easy.